sitting here with Shannon, who wrote To Stop a Warlord, my story of justice, grace, and the fight for peace. Shannon, tell us what made you want to write this story, and what is this book about? This book is about a warlord, in particular Joseph Kony, who um, is part of Africa's longest-running war, was the founder of a movement that uh, accounted for thousands of deaths and abductions in Central and East Africa. Uh, he founded something called the Lord's Resistance Army, or the LRA, as most people know it. He was also the first indictee of the International Criminal Court. And then a couple of his other leaders were indictees number two and three. And our story is the journey of trying to stop the LRA and trying to stop the violence and the mass atrocity of the LRA and our success and failures within that mission. And what made you want to get involved in this work? I've always had a heart for justice. I went to law school. I uh, worked a period of time doing work in human trafficking and child prostitution in Southeast Asia. And I'm running a, a philanthropic foundation for a company, a money management mutual funds company that gives half its profits away with a mission to end mass atrocity in the world. And uh, that led us to this mission. I know it's very important to you to talk about the unsung heroes who are the local leaders that you talk about in the book. Tell us more about them. Um, as we got engaged and started to look at these issues and started doing more traditional grant making in this area, I met these moms, these moms who were hiding their kids at night because they were scared they were going to be kidnapped. I met these local civil leaders and they become your friends, right? And at some point, um, that changes the entire equation. That's when you say, no, no, what? Not only what can I do to help, but what is my responsibility to help? And it's different. What do you want your two boys to know about their mother? Mm. This all happened when they were very, very young. What do you want them to know about this chapter of your own life? One time when I was heading off on a mission that uh, we had hoped to capture Coney on that particular mission, Connor said, Mom, are you going to see the zebras again in Africa? And because Connor's context for Africa at the time as a young child were uh, the animals, right? The little plastic animals that he would always line up on our, our dining room table. And um, and I felt like that was an invitation to make clear that no, son, mommy would never leave you to go see the zebras in Africa for three months a year total or whatever it ended up being. Um, but rather that there are some, some boys and girls your age that are in trouble and mom's hoping that Maybe I can do a little something to help. 100% of the author's net proceeds from this book will go to organizations seeking justice and protection for civilians in conflict zones. Why was this so important to you? Oh, gosh, because it's not my story by any means. It's the story of these remarkable individuals who have suffered so much and have brought about so much change. And um, their story and the profits from their story should completely honor them. And that's our hope. What do you want to say to people out there listening to you and who read the book about how they can get involved? Central Africa may not be the place that you were sort of called to be involved in your life, um, may not be the, the place that makes your heart beat a bit faster. It was for me. Um, but it might be your next door neighbor. It might be a shelter in downtown in your community. Um, it might be somewhere else in the state. It might be in politics. It might be in education. But listen and know that there aren't boundaries on a human heart. Like, actually, if you act into those inclinations of your heart, you will be rewarded with something this sacred. Because I was. So for the people who haven't walked this story with you for the past decade, what do you want them to know? Gosh, you know, I, my biggest sort of the North Star for me is like, guys, we don't have to accept this in the world. Like we don't have to accept that a million people fall off the face of the earth in Rwanda, you know, in a genocide over 10 weeks. Like that, that doesn't feel right in our souls and it shouldn't feel right. And we don't have to accept it. And not only do we not have to accept it, but every one of us, can play a strategic part in stopping 
these conflicts and these mass atrocities. And at some point, I think if there's enough of a groundswell around like this is just the borderline at which humanity will not accept anything more evil or anything worse, that maybe we can ratchet things down a bit. And for the people out there who are so inspired by you and what you have done and just your courage and your bravery, your commitment, what do you want to say to the people out there who don't know how to find their passion? You sit on several boards. We are filming this interview interview today at This Saves Lives, where you just came from a nine hour board meeting. So where can someone go to take that first step to turn their passion into action? How do they find that? Yeah, I think what you do and, and what I did at least early in, in my life sort of after law school is I started volunteering at a number of places that kind of hit my radar as something I might be interested in. And I started investing time, right? The gift of your presence really repays dividends, right? If you can be physically present in circumstances of injustice, you will be able to take in information about what is the core passion of your life and say yes in those areas and be comfortable saying no in the other ones and not and, and be comfortable not sort of being co-opted by a movement that may not be central to your heart. Perfect, Shannon, thank you so much. Thank you.